Okay. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining today. Uh, so first, I want to give a brief intro on myself and Nextleaf, and then provide some context for the panel. And then we'll get into um, the panel. Uh, we'll do intros and uh, then get into the questions. So um, first off, my name is Martin Lukacs. I'm the CTO and co-founder of Nextleaf Analytics. We're a nonprofit tech company. Uh, our mission is to uh, partner with countries to ensure they have the data they need to build lasting solutions that improve the health of people. Um, we do this by developing and providing IoT technology to do remote temperature monitoring of vaccine fridges. What that means is we build a device which sends fridge performance data, fridges that store vaccines over the cellular network to a dashboard. Um, we currently have deployments in Tanzania, Malawi, and Kenya, and India. Um, as an org, uh, we don't believe the technology is the full solution by itself. So we work with the government to support implementing programs to manage the system, and more importantly, try to make use of the data. We're working to improve the system um, so that it meets the government's needs. So this is all to say that the context for this panel will be health systems in low-income countries. The panel is about data ownership and data use through the perspective of our panelists who work for, have worked for, or work with the ministries of health. Um, we hope that what you hear today can give you ideas or perspective that can apply in your own work. And more importantly, that it's crucial to understand the ownership and use of the data and not lose or forget this perspective in any technology or data work. Um, this is because ensuring the country ownership and use of the data helps with the sustainability of impact via the data and the data systems. Um, so just a little bit more for me. Um, I want to keep the definition of data ownership simple um, uh, and data rights. So when talking about data rights, it comes down to who owns the data what they can do with it, including defining how it can be used and shared by others and how it is upheld and enforced. Um, so that, that data can be anything, but as I mentioned, the context here is health systems within the Ministry of Health. And so the data information that is generated, uh, so the data here is the information that is generated as the Ministries of Health do their work in providing care and managing the health system. So this can include everything from transactional supply chain data to health records, to health outcome study data, to equipment information, to sensor data. Um, and so Nextly focuses on supporting the management of the vaccine cold chain. So today you will hear, uh, and uh, our colleagues, Bonaventura, Zainab, and Nalima, um, all work within the vaccine supply chain. So you will very likely hear a lot about um, vaccines and, and the data generated around there. So um, one, one note I wanted to make is um, one of our panelists was not able to make it today. Um, so I've asked one of our, uh, one of my coworkers, Nalima, um, who's based out of Kenya to join the panel. Um, we were hoping to have individuals that are able, that have, uh, worked directly for the government, um, uh, but the, the one individual was unable to join. However, Nalima um, has many years of experience working alongside the ministry and advocating for and understanding their needs. So um, next, I want to um, get into introductions. So I'm just going to go down the panel and uh, ask you all a few questions about yourself. So uh, Bonaventura. Um, thank you so much for joining. Can you introduce yourself? Uh, can you describe what you do now? What's your focus and how your, how did your career bring you to this work? Um, you know, what's been your journey? Thank you, Martin. Thank you, colleagues. Good afternoon. Good morning, everyone joining. Uh, it's wonderful to be with you today. And uh, as Martin has introduced, uh, we are going to talk about data rights. And uh, I'll be uh, 
referring to data rights from the Ministry of Health perspective, as I've been working with the Ministry of Health in Tanzania for quite some time now. So I know we'll share some uh, insights concerning data rights as far as you mentioned is concerned. Well, my name is Bonaventura Nestori. I'm a public health specialist. Well, I've been working with the Ministry of Health for the past, uh, uh, for the past like uh, nine years now, but also used to work at the subnational level uh, for seven years, since 2005, before coming to the Ministry of Health uh, in, in early 2013. Uh, since my graduation from school, I've been working with the immunization program. So I've never worked beyond uh, immunization. Uh, it just it, it has come like a, an, a, an accident. I've never chosen to be an immunization expert. So it just happened to be like that. Uh, at subnational level, when I first joined the subnational level, I was appointed to support uh, the district code chain officer. So I was an assistant district code chain officer. Uh, a day later, when I went back to school for upgrading, I did my master's in monitoring and evaluation, and later in a master of science in supply chain management. And all of this because of the work I've been doing. So it just happened because of the work I'm doing. Then I had to uh, improve my career in the uh, subjects which aligned me well in the uh, immunization, monitoring, supply chain as well. So it has been just like that. Uh, for, for, for me, uh, I think it's a passion to be in the immunization. And uh, when you are talking about immunization, it's most of it you are dealing with the data. From morning to evening, it's just data. It's all about vaccinations. It's all about uh, temperature monitoring. It's all about supply chain data, the consumption strength. So you have to use data most of the time. So with me, data is everything in my life. I enjoy seeing data, doing analysis, et cetera, et cetera. So maybe that's all. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Bonaventura. Um, so Zainab, uh, how about you? Um, what do you do now? What's your focus? And how did you, how did you get here? OK, thank you very much, Martin. First of all, I'm so glad to, to join this meeting today. As you have just introduced, my name is Zainab Nyamungumi. Professionally, I'm a pharmacist, but currently I'm assuming the duties of a culture manager at vaccine, immunization and vaccine program here in Tanzania under the Ministry of Health. But starting my journey as a government employee, I started as a hospital pharmacist back in 2006. Then after eight years, I, I decided to uh, increase my knowledge by doing master's degree. After completing my master's degree, then I was appointed as a deputy registrar of Pharmacy Council. Uh, this is a regulatory authority for pharmacy professionals. And I stayed there for almost nine years. And now I was uh, now shifted to um, immunization and vaccine program as a pharmacist of the program. Uh, my, my main responsibility here uh, at the immunization and vaccine program is to uh, coordinate procurement of cold chain equipment for national level, for subnational level and service point level, but also to monitor or to oversee the performance of those cold chain through the use of temperature data. That is all I can say. Thank you. Um, Nalima? Um, what do you do now? Here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you everyone. Um, good morning and good afternoon to all the people joining us today. Uh, so my name is Nelima Otipa and um, I am a public health professional. Um, my passion is uh, using lived experiences to improve services and products um, working with the Ministry of Health. I have um, experience across um, various um, in research, monitoring and evaluation, um, I've worked in different health programs. 
um, and I currently work with uh, Nextleaf Analytics um, and other NGO partners uh, to champion data use. And essentially what we are currently doing is um, helping ministries of health answer the question, um, how do I know that the vaccines that I am giving to the end user is potent? Um, and I'm very glad to be here. Thank you, Martin. Thanks, Nalima. Um, so let's get let's get into the topic. Um, uh, I'll just go down the row again. Uh, Bonaventura. So, what are the things that keep data from informing everything the ministry does? You know, you describe that you in your work, everything is data. But there, from 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 my perspective, I've, I've seen that sometimes it doesn't all line up. Sometimes it doesn't work. But so what are the what are the barriers and challenges that that keeps data from really being part of of day to day as effectively as it can? Thank you, thank you, Martin. Uh, well, we might be differing in one aspect or another in terms in terms of data, but uh, uh, as I say, uh, when we, I can hear you. Can you hear me? We thank you. you thank you so with with me when i'm saying that uh my everyday life is mainly data yeah this is that that's very true because uh when it comes to uh vaccination uh you have to understand uh the number of people or clients you are targeting uh in a community so you have to understand every uh aspect in terms of uh storage capacity and when you are talking about the storage capacity, you have to know the number of clients, the number of uh, the number of vaccination sessions they are going to perform. Uh, for example, if it's a weekly vaccination, is if it's a monthly vaccination, if they are going to be uh, vaccination around the uh, school girls for HPV vaccination. So you have to understand even the number of uh, vaccine carriers which are going to be used. You have to understand the number of trips, the mileage, etc. And uh, most most important when it comes to immunization data, uh, I may say that uh, most of the time we have also to forecast the uh, Zainab mentioned about the cold chain equipment. So when you are talking about the cold chain equipment, the most necessary thing is to know the uh, the capacity, the storage capacity of the vaccines. So you have to uh, deal with the number, uh, the, 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 the data most of the time. When we, before moving out of the, the, the ministry, uh, I was doing the same task which Zainab is now doing. So you have to understand the number of, uh, the number of new facilities which are going to be uh, uh, established in the next year so that you can plan well in terms of number of production equipment that you're supposed to, to, to procure. And uh, this also comes when, uh, specifically when, for example, you want to uh, seek some support from uh, bilateral donors. So you have to bring there uh, exact number of equipment and you have to justify why you need a certain type of uh, refrigerator. So that uh, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you, you present to a donor, they have to understand it clearly. Uh, this is the justification of it so that... Uh, they can uh, rely on, 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 on what, is, what, is, what is more important, especially when they have to compare between the country requirements uh, compared to another country. So data is most of, most of, most of everything I'm, I'm dealing with, and that, that is very important. But also when I was at the Minister of Health, I was dealing with the temperature monitoring. So every morning when you wake up, you have to pull, pull the data from the, these remote temperature monitoring devices so that we get a picture of what is the temperature like across the, 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 the country from the national level to the subnational level. So whenever you find that uh, there is a data which is a contradictory or we, you find the data of the temperature which is beyond the recommended uh, uh, temperatures, recommended range, then you have to take an action. You have to call back those uh, people at the subnational level who are dealing with the, with, with the temperature monitoring. So. For me, uh, data is very important that uh, you have to uh, obtain the data, which is very reliable, so that you can be in a position to justify, to defend your arguments, and uh, to make you understand yourself uh, 
stand forward confidently when you're talking with the fellow uh, fellow experts in the immunization. Thank you. So I have, I have a follow up question. Um, so you know you're you're very much describing the need for for having that data and, and managing that data. What do you wish could be working better about that? Um, what what could, what do you wish could be working better about that? And what could the data be doing that it's not doing now? You see, for for, for most, I, I don't know for other countries, but most of our developing countries, uh, we are collecting too much data. And uh, I think most of most of my colleagues will, will, will agree with me. We are collecting too much of data. And uh, in most of our countries, we have uh, inadequate number of human resource which can utilize the data. So that is one of the challenge which we are facing. So when it comes to data use, that is a big challenge. And uh, sometimes we even don't know uh, the essence of collecting data. For example, specifically when you're talking about the monitoring and evaluation, we are, we are, we are, we are told that uh, it is of no use to collect data which you are not going to use. And uh, sometimes this is not clearly understood. So sometimes you just collect data because you have the chance, you have the system, but obviously that is that is wrong. So you have to collect data which you are going to use specifically to inform uh, the, the management. You have to use the same data to, uh, to, to make decisions concerning something. So it's not about data collection, but you have to collect data which you are going to use for decision making and then inform uh, the management for, for, for taking further actions. Thank you. Great. Uh, I, oh, go ahead, Nalima. Yeah, uh, thank you, Bonaventure. Um, that, uh, I'd actually like to add on to that because um, I totally agree that um, it is the quality and not the quantity of data that is very important. Um, and so, you know, at some point, I think people um, have gotten carried away with just collecting data without having um, really understanding what the essence of that data is. And I think uh, the other point that I'd also add on to that is um, the, the issue of um, just focusing on the people because we collect data for a reason. It needs to be solving a problem. And that means that the people who are in charge, even if it is um, technology that is collecting the data, um, there is a human element always because either someone has to check on it, someone has to check on the system, someone has to check on the equipment, something needs a human intervention. And so for as long as uh, the person who is collecting that data does not understand the essence of that data, then it becomes very difficult to become, um, to collect that data and have useful data. So the people, and that uh, means going to the grassroots the people have to understand um, the essence of the data that is being collected uh, for you to end up with uh, good data. That means, again, that you're collecting quality data and not a high quantity of data. Thanks, Malima. Um, Zainab, how about you? What what barriers and challenges do you see? What What keeps the data from informing everything the ministry does? Uh, I'm not very far from what Nelimi was just explaining. Uh, in most cases, the, the data that the ministry uses come from the service point level. But most of the healthcare workers that are working at the health point level, they have a number of data that are filling, not only for the vaccine program, there's HIV program, there's TB program, there's malaria program. They have a number of data that are being filled in different data collection tools. So that, that also is a confusing. So when you, you, you have these new, new, new employees that are not very much aware of filling those forms, what you are getting is not a data. It's just, it's, just a, it's, it's just a poor data that cannot be used by the ministry to make any decision. Okay. Um, what do you, what do you, what would you want to work better around that? I think in order to, to work better around that, we, we have limited number of people at the service point level. If it's possible, we should, uh, we should, uh, we should, uh, 
what would, what could I say? Is it link the, the, the collection tool from different program into a single form to make it mm -hmm. simple for the one who is dealing with it? Okay. So, so what I'm, what I'm hearing from everyone, uh, or, or, or just now from Nilima and Zainab is that there, there's a, a people aspect to sort of owning and managing and making use of the data. And a lot of those is some of this is just being done because it's like, well, we're supposed to collect this, so let's collect it. And there's challenges around, okay, well, we, we need to use this, let's use it. But you know, there's, there's gaps in resources and in people in, in, in enabling them to, to make use of the data. Um, so uh, Zainab, I have, I have one more question for you, follow-up question for you. So let's say that that all gets in place and those, those challenges are solved. What, what does it unlock? What does it enable? Um, let, let's say the, the challenge you described goes away and that's solved. So what happens then? If challenge of of having different data from different program go, goes away, yeah, and and it all comes together into the one system. I think it, from 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 my explanation, the data quality will improve, and if the data quality will improve, will inform the decision makers on what to to decide depending on those data. Okay. Um, Bonaventura, any, any thoughts from you on that? Like what, um, you know, what unlocks when the, um, that collection and, and management of the data becomes better? Well, I think from Zainab's perspective, uh, he, she mentioned that, uh, one of the barrier is having multiple, multiple uh, data collection systems. And uh, we have a limited human resource at the subnational level, specifically the service delivery point. So I think for me, the most important thing is that I will reduce to a huge extent the workload which these uh, frontline healthcare workers are facing right now. And sometimes you see, because of the workloads, people at the national level exerting on them, specifically when we're having multiple data, data collection systems. And uh, this creates them uh, uh, a sense that uh, they have just to report the data they're collecting. And there's no way they can utilize that data all for, for themselves at the facilities. So they're just collecting data and forward to the district and the national level. So there is no time uh, for reviewing even the data themselves. So. I know, I'm sure that uh, whenever we have a system that is very integrated, that is very user-friendly, then these healthcare workers at, at the service delivery point will have time to uh, utilize the data. They, have, they, they do the analysis by themselves and they will understand the data by themselves. So they will be in a position to make decisions concerning the data which they are collecting at the same, same facilities. I think that is very crucial for, for data, data collection and the use at the production point. Thank you. Um, Nalima, same question to you. Anything to, to add or any other different perspectives? No, I just definitely uh, really concur with uh, Bonaventura and uh, Zainab that we should really be thinking about uh, the health worker and bring back the joy of data collection because if they're able to analyze their data, they're able to draw insights from their data, then it means that um, it becomes less work for them and as a result, like it's a, it's a chain that keeps on giving because everybody benefits um, from that data. So definitely agree with them. Great. Um, so what, um, it, uh, it, it, this, this sort of, you know, unifying everything together and, um, enabling this for the healthcare workers. Um, do you see any, like, let's say, you know, it's five, 10 years from now and we're there. Um, do you see any challenges arising then? Or is, is that like, you know, the vision, are, are we done? W what else, what else might show up once, 
what other challenges can you imagine would show up once um, once we we reach that that vision of of, of having this system that's uh, unified <laughs> and you know enables the healthcare workers to access and manage and, and analyze their data? Um, that's a, a very interesting question, Martin. So I think what happens is that new insights breed new problems, new challenges, because um, when you solve one challenge, then it brings up something else that needs to be solved. Um, because even when you think about um, just talking about temperature monitoring, for instance, when you um, unlock, let's say, the data use, then you realize something else that is broken in the system. And then you go and fix that. Then once you fix that, then you realize something else is broken in the system. Then you fix that. Um, so all I can say is that um, at the end of the day, there is a lot to be unlocked. Um, but I, I cannot say that there is, um, you know, like a future magical time where there will be no challenges. Um, but... I think at the end of the day, what we are just uh, looking for is more visibility into some of these challenges um, and a way to, to track and to fix and even to do retrospectives so that even when we go back in time, we can tell uh, the reason why we are here is because of one, two, three. Even if we are not able to fix the actual challenge, then at least at the very least, we have visibility into it. Okay. Um, so I want to, uh, maybe, uh, ask some, I, 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 not maybe, <laughs> I want to ask some questions about, um, uh, ex maybe recent experiences each of you have had, um, that kind of highlight some of these challenges and, you know, what, what, what could have been different, um, uh, some real, real world examples of what you're working on now and uh, th those challenges you faced. So um, Bonaventura, can we, can we start with you? Thank you, Martin. Maybe to start with, uh, then my colleagues will, will add on. But, uh, but uh, the most pressing challenge uh, which I've been experiencing with uh, not specifically being the data, but uh, the data collection systems per se, is that uh, we are having uh, like silo, silo data collection systems. Uh, you have, we have many data collection systems uh, at the facility level, at the subnational level. So, so sometimes it becomes too difficult to integrate these systems. Uh, I'm not sure uh, uh, what is really causing this challenge, but uh, perhaps uh, the type of uh, support most countries are receiving to develop these systems. You see, most of the lower and the middle income countries are depending on uh, donors to perform most of the activities in the countries. So sometimes this support to develop the systems are not coming in big chunks to enable uh, development of one systems which can incorporate too many aspects of the nation, not in nation per se, but perhaps the whole health system of the country. So these individual small, small supports sometimes creates uh, a challenge by having uh, small, small data collection systems, which also sometimes you cannot integrate. You, there's no way you can come later in, after 10 years or five years and say that you would like to have these systems integrating, these systems speaking between themselves. So that becomes a very challenging uh, aspect. So sometimes even the, the, the support comes or another donor comes, uh, he, he wanted to support something in, in a country, then he, he come with his own system. So I, I think for me, that is a many, many challenges which we're facing uh, in lower and middle income countries concerning data, data systems that they use. Thank you. So to, to kind of frame that, I want to try to put that in my own words. Uh, it's that the, there's the, the the challenges with with ownership is is how funding comes in and how it's supporting and having these systems built. They're built in silos and they aren't built with that initial intention of interoperability, right? You know, it, maybe in the in the big vision, there is not going to be one um, 
one system that everyone uses for everything, but maybe it's that there's multiple systems, but they could all work together in some way. Um, and because of how the funding comes in, even if the government potentially has a vision for all how that, how that will work, it's either not enough funding or it's not applied or given in the right ways to, to make that, that unifying picture happen. Um, is that is that a fair way to describe it as well? Absolutely, absolutely, Barton. Um, Lima, did you want to um, add something? Yeah, I just wanted to add on to that and say that um, what one of the elements that I can really see there is the element of really just listening, like even with um, even if it is funding, you know, donations that it should take a user-first approach um, such that the person who is giving um, the aid or um, in whatever way, that they are cognizant of what the situation on the ground is so that they can make sure that um, all these things are factored in. Because at the end of the day, the person who is receiving the goods or is receiving um, the service or the money is the one who really understands their problems or their challenges in the health system. And so they can give proper guidance on how best to implement those systems. And so um, just adding that as an element to what uh, Bona is talking about, that um, a user-first approach, because we may not know all the elements that are important for us to take into consideration, but it is very important for um, the owner or, or rather the people who are on the ground uh, to be consulted in all this decision making. Thanks. Um, uh, Zainab, so could, maybe this is putting a lot on you, but can you can you answer that question? Like, you know, the, the donors and everyone comes to you and says, well, we want to listen. You know, what do you want to, what do you need? What do you want to tell us? Like, what's working for you now and, and what's not working? Um, how, would you, how would you answer them? And I can, I can clarify. Um, can, you, can you provide a, a, an example of work recently where you have run into these challenges and how would you describe that to you know these donors and what could be better? Is that for me? Because I have yes. I had a network yes. problem. Okay. okay, sure. I could I could repeat okay. the question if that's helpful. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um so Nalima was saying that you know the, the donors need to listen, or you know, the, the folks sort of organizing and supporting uh, various programs and distributing that. Um, can um, should be should be listening more to the the folks on the ground, the the government, the workers, um, to 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 figure out well, okay, how do we build these systems together? Um, what can you share from your recent experience that you feel would would help inform um, the um, the people providing the money to build these systems? Okay. <clears throat> From from the perspective of uh, our vaccine uh, program, we had that challenge that Bon was just explaining of having so many systems. For example, in our country, we have almost three systems that monitor utilization of vaccine. There's one system that monitor utilization of COVID vaccine. There's the other system that monitor utilization of routine vaccine, but reaches to, only to subnational level. And there's uh, another system that monitor utilization of vaccine at the sub service point level, but all the empty. They all each one each one is 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 working on a separate ways. So you being a, a national supply chain officer, you cannot measure the utilization of all those vaccine at one point. You have to 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 use all those three system to have. To, to get the, the the actual utilization and even the the it makes us more harder because the the visibility of data at the service point level becomes so hard for us so if if the donor 
uh, hearing us, they should, uh, before, before for them to decide what to do, they should uh, face, uh, do some consultation with the users to determine which, which way to, to make. Uh, thanks. So we have just a few minutes left, and I see Nalima has uh, probably had some network issues. Um, so uh, let's let's finish off by saying what's uh, you know what's something that's going well. Uh, what what's something that within the space you work within the data that you see that that is working that is is some you know a, a path or a, a direction that that you're you're excited about. Um, Bonaventura? Maybe I should start with that with the, with the, with the question. Uh, I think the most most important uh, thing for when you're talking about data is uh, the data used at the generation point. And uh, this is very, very important in terms of uh, the those people at the service delivery point or the uh, subnational level, by themselves, they'll have time to analyze the data and uh, make decisions, uh, time, time, timely decisions when it comes to uh, maybe the risk of the situation or what. Uh, rather than uh, sending the data to the national level, and uh, the national level, they find the time for, for themselves to, to, to do the analysis and they bring back the results or the different. Uh, the gaps, complicate the gaps back to the healthcare workers, the service delivery point. So it takes time, but when uh, we see that the healthcare workers and the service delivery point can have a, a, an opportunity to discuss the data by themselves, it will enable a timely, timely decision making at the service delivery, delivery point, because uh, this is the most important rather than waiting for the subnational level or the national level officers to, to bring back the differences and recommend what to do with terms of data. That, that is very crucial for me. Uh, and uh, I think that is very important when it comes to data and the data use. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so uh, it's telling me we have one minute and 40 seconds left. Um, I, I guess, Zainab, any, any final thoughts? And it could include anything that you're excited about and that you see is going well. Um, or anything, any just closing closing thoughts around uh, like Bonaventura about you know what's what's your focus next, and what what you what you think should be fixed next? Okay. Uh, what I can say is that having the system uh, to collect the data help the uh, the people at the ministry level to make decision rather than doing it manually. Because, for example, in our country we have more than seven thousand health facilities that are providing immunization services. If you do it manually, it becomes impossible. But having the system, it helps us a lot to monitor some of the issues that are happening uh, below in, in, at the ground. That's what I can say. OK. Um, well, uh, thank you both. Um, Nalima, unfortunately, dropped off. Um, but yeah, and thanks everyone for joining and listening in. Um, our our infos in uh, the Habilo thing, uh, the, the the system. So if you have any follow up questions, just let us know. Ping us in that system. Um, and so thanks everyone. Thank you um, too.